Let's reduce the pressure of the water by putting the water in a vacuum chamber, and let's measure the temperature of the water as we reduce the pressure. Okay, here we have a beaker of water. Let's go ahead and put the thermometer inside and see what it is. By the way, I uh, put, added some food coloring to this just to make it a little easier to, to see. So we're at 72 Celsius. Remember, 100 Celsius is boiling, so we're not boiling. Let's go ahead and um, put the chamber on and fire it up. Okay, water in a vacuum chamber. Here we go, three, two, one, vacuum on. All right, 72.2. We're about three quarters of an atmosphere. Notice the temperature is starting to drop almost immediately. We'll talk more about why that happens in just a second, but let's just take a look and see. We're at about a half of an atmosphere. 71.3, 71.1, temperature's coming down very, very repeatably, and notice it's starting to boil very vigorously. Actually starting to splash out of the container. 68, 67. Let's see how far we can get down. Let's see if we can get down close to the freezing point of water. 62. Now here we are at about a quarter of an atmosphere. Obviously we're doing a lot of splashing. Now why is it boiling? We're not adding any heat. This is equivalent to taking uh, something to the top of a mountain and trying to boil it. Everything boils easier at a lower temperature at a higher elevation because the pressure is lower. And the reason why is because the action of boiling is basically the molecules trying to get away from the bulk liquid, but they're fighting against atmospheric pressure, which is pushing down. So when we add heat, all we're doing is adding enough thermal energy and agitation for them to break, break the bonds, break the intermolecular attraction and fly away. So if we reduce the outside pressure, we just make it easier for the liquid to escape. And that's why it's able to boil at a much lower uh, pressure here. All right, we're at 39 degrees Celsius. I know it's a little hard to see here with the fog. All right, that's about as good as this vacuum pump can go. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.